I gotta say this. Um, in 1972, uh, I was a little Chicanita from Clifton Morency area, and I was um, first in my family to come to the University of Arizona. And I wanted to be a reporter more than anything. And I looked around and there was nobody like me uh, in the entire school of journalism. And it was a very lonely place. I look out now and I see many people like me. We're not going anywhere. And I love the diversity of the University of Arizona. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Mike hates it when I go off script. See, he's got me here real, real carefully. Uh, I'd like to bring up one of my favorite people at the University of Arizona, and I love saying her name, Associate Professor Celeste Gonzalez de Bustamante. To introduce Carmen, <laughs> Professor Gonzalez Bustamante recently received a prestigious UA faculty fellowship from the Hari Program in Environmental and Social Justice. She's a member of the School of Journalism Center for Border and Global Journalism. Uh, her most recent work with Associate Professor Janine Relly has centered on increasing threats to journalists in Mexico. Celeste? Thank you, Nancy. Good evening, everyone. As Nancy mentioned, I and my colleague Janine Relly have been working on studying the issue of violence against journalists in Mexico for the past seven years. Here's what we know. In Mexico, the third largest democracy in the Americas, on average, a journalist a month is killed. This has been the case for the past several years. According to the London-based human rights organization, Article 19, every day at least one journalist in Mexico is attacked. In the third largest democracy in, Amer in the Americas, more than 90% of these cases of violence against journalists go unsolved. Our research has shown that journalism in the country's peripheral zones and in zones of conflict Reporters have had to alter drastically the way they go about their work. In some places, such as in the state of Tamaulipas, along Mexico's south southeastern border with Texas, journalists and editors are forced to answer to two bosses, those in the newsroom and those outside of the newsroom. At times, editors must wait for a so-called green light from their bosses outside of the newsroom before they can publish. Over the past seven years, we've interviewed more than 100 journalists, activists, and academics about the environment for journalists in Mexico. It is, by all accounts, a dire and grim situation. Yet, in the midst of these incredible constraints and danger, journalists continue to do their work. We have found that women are often at the helm of collective actions to improve the situation for journalists. For example, Rocio Gallegos, Lucy Sosa, and Gabriela Banjares in the state of Chihuahua continue to do their work as part of the Juarez Journalist Networks. Six years ago, Rocio Gallegos, Rodriguez, and Sandra Rodriguez Nieto were presented with the John Peter and Anna Catherine Zenger Award for their investigative work at El Diario de Juarez. Recently, Gallegos stepped away from El Diario to start a new critical publication titled simply La verdad, the truth. This is the scenario in which hundreds of journalists across the country continue to try every day to inform the public. It is the environment in which Carmen Aristegui, our guest of honor this evening, has continued to persevere despite pressure by the government and other forces. In 2005, Ms. Aristegui joined CNN in Español in Spanish, after 15 years of professional experience working as an anchor, commentator, and interviewer on radio and television. Currently, she anchors and directs the program Aristegui, a program that features frank dialogues with prominent figures about politics, economics, culture, and entertainment in Mexico and Latin America. Aristegui was born in Mexico City 
where she studied at Mexico's National Autonomous University and where she received a degree in communication sciences. Over the years, Ms. Aristegui has received numerous awards for her work, including the National Journalism Award in Mexico in 2009 and the Maria Cap Moore's Cabot Award, which she received in 2008. And the list goes on and on, but we'd like to hear from Ms. Aristegui this evening. She's the author of three books. I'm going to mention the titles in English. One of two, 2006, Mexico at the Crossroads, Transition, Conversations, and Portraits from What Met Was Done and What Was Left Undone for Democracy in Mexico, and Marciel, Marciel, The Story of a Criminal. But this is only part of Ms. Aristegui's story. In March of 2015, she was dismissed from her position as a well-recognized news anchor on MVS radio. Her dismissal removed from the airwaves one of the few broadcast journalists in Mexico who openly challenged authorities. This came shortly after she and her team of journalists published a report linking the country's first lady, Angelica Rivera, to a sweetheart deal and purchase of a multi-million dollar home in the city's posh neighborhood known as Lomas de Chipotepec. It was clear that the value of the home was well out of the presidential couple's means. The report prompted a national debate about corruption and conflicts of interest. The controversy dealt another blow to President Enrique Peña Nieto's popularity and credibility and caused him to ask the Mex Mexican people for forgiveness. This wasn't the first time Ms. Arastegui was let go for doing what reporters are supposed to do, dig deep and hold the powerful accountable. In 2011, during the administration of then Felipe, President Felipe Calderón Hinojosa, Aristegui reported about a banner that members of the opposition brought and displayed at a session of the National Chamber of Deputies. The banner included an unflattering photo of the president with drooping eyes, and it asked the questions, would you let a drunk drive your car? No, right? So why would you let him get behind the wheel of the country? After reporting about the controversy, Aristegui was asked by MVS Radio to apologize. She did not, and she was taken off the air. Perhaps one of the most chilling moments in Aristegui's career happened in 2015 when it became apparent that the government was using the spy software known as Pegasus to surveil her activities as well as her, as well as her son Emilio's. According to a report by Ryan Devereaux and Thiago Dizan of The Intercept, an examination of their phones revealed that each were targeted dozens of times with tailor-made messages to entice them to click. Ms. Aristegui has said that if privileged journalists like those on her team could be attacked, imagine the level of vulnerability for journalists in Mexico, for other journalists in Mexico. It is definitely a difficult time for journalists. Reporting around the country, especially those working in the nation's periphery, are the most at risk and most threatened. Yet in the midst of this darkness, in just a few days, Ms. Aristegui will be back on the radio after a three and a half year hiatus. This time. <laughs> not with MVS. Another company. She and her work will continue to be a beacon of strength, hope, and light of information for the people who deserve to know what's happening in their country. Now, we would like to have you watch a video produced by some reporters at The Intercept that helps explain some of the details and the details that uh, Ms. Aristegui and her son have gone through.